Welcome to Toffee TV, it is the Everton News Daily. Uh, before we get into all this sports pays news, Everton under 23s have just beaten Derby County 2 1 at Goodison Park with a Ellis Sims 94th minute winner. They went in front through an Impala goal, uh, pegged back with a uh, I think about nine minutes to go. And then just after Joe Virginia actually made a fantastic save to keep it at 1-1. Ellis Sims went down the other end, used all his strength and finished brilliantly to give uh, the Young Blues a win. They're around mid-table this year, not having as good a season as last season. But that's probably because, uh, you know, players have moved up to the first team or gone on loan or have left the club. So, um all good there. Everton ladies also in action tonight away to Bristol City in the FA Cup. They're currently winning 3-0 as it stands. So they're uh, looking through, looking good to go through in the FA Cup as well. Yes, as reported yesterday, or as Everton certainly come out with, uh, Everton are to get a new sponsor for next season. Sports Pager uh, have been dropped with a couple of years of the contract to go. Um, this is for possibly one of three reasons, or a combination of all of them, really. Um, lots of, obviously, talk out there about football, ditching, gambling sponsorships, uh, certainly high-profile shared sponsorships. Uh, I, I think a lot of clubs will continue to have, will have a gambling partner, and maybe sports pays will be kept on in that regard. Uh, we're talking about a company that's uh, headquarters, is or European headquarters are in the Liver Building, a couple of floors below Everton's headquarters. Obviously, the Liver Building's owned by Fahad Mashiri you now, so they do have um, more than just a you know a, a, a sponsorship deal. There's there's a bigger picture to this, um, but obviously with with betting in football, sort of getting looked, we're well, getting frowned upon massively now by fans and uh, by the outside world. That may be one of the reasons. I was at the uh, the general meeting when someone actually stood up and spoke to Denise Barrett Baxendale about the idea of of uh, having such a high profile community, um, you know, having partner or whatever you want to call them, Everton, an Everton in the community and having a gambling sponsor. The two just didn't really go together. And on the night she was, she did say basically say if there was an alternative. They would try and they would try and get it. Well, now it looks like you know that that is one of the reasons behind this. Um, as we as we move forward, there is also the fact that sports pays uh, themselves are in a bit of um, a, had a bit of a troublesome year, certainly last year, with their problems in their home country, Kenya, with um, basically their operating license taken off them because of their effect they've had on on a lot of young people in, in getting into gambling and gambling problems. So there is, there, is that, there is that as well. Everton might want to distance them, themselves from that. And then there's also the fact that Everton are probably looking for a larger sponsorship deal going forward. They see that the market is is ripe for getting a, a, a larger partner um, as, a, as a sponsorship. There's also, you know, with the FFP stuff as well, they'll want a bigger deal. There's also the idea of maybe getting getting maybe a shared sponsor and a and a training kit sponsor. That's what a lot of the clubs have got, and we've seen this season um, megaphone on the training gear uh, on the arm. The academy have got their own um, sponsored as well. Uh, Finch Farmers, obviously USM. There's a lot of USM and megaphone branding going on the going on the the ground as well. So. Will it be someone like Megaphone? Will it be USM? Will it be one of the other USM companies? Um, that would enable us to pump a lot more money into the club. You know, rightly or wrongly, um, as long as it's done the right way. You know, that's that's not for us to decide, but certainly um, that's what's going to happen now. And there is the prospect now of Everton having three um, new logos on their shirts next season. Um, with Angry Birds contract coming to an end as well, a lot of speculation about a new sleeve sponsor. Uh, I know a a Chinese TV company, um, TV maker has been um, mentioned in that, and obviously the shirt sponsor, and obviously the kit maker as well. A lot of rumours about the kit maker as well for next season. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. But Everton obviously looking to get a bigger and better commercial commercial partners into the club and getting it you know uh, uh, to align with what the club wants so 
this seems like Everton are trying to get away from uh, a betting company and move to uh, something that fits in more of the brand with Everton. And obviously, there's a lot of things that come with that as well. We've seen with 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 when we had Chang, we went over to Thailand to play a game against Leicester City. With uh, obviously with this current sponsor with Sports Pager, we've been out to Kenya a couple of times. Um, the Kenyan team was visited Goodison Park. Um, so there's a lot of commercial tie-ins. If Everton could get a big deal, maybe with a if it wasn't to be one of the USN companies on Megafon, Everton it could mean maybe uh, pre-season tour to somewhere like America, but it's a good American company, or or to the Far East if it's a big um, Asian company. So we'll just have to wait and see what it is, but hopefully it will mean a lot more money for Everton coming coming in, um, and of hopefully um, a sponsor that can go on. Any kit, whether it be kit, uh, kids or adults, um, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Obviously, we'll know probably before the end of the season. I would imagine it's out there now, and a lot of big companies apparently have approached Everton to be the next kit sponsor. So there you go. Uh, in other news, Andre Gomez played an hour yesterday in a behind-closed-doors game at Finch Farm. He played alongside... Gilfie Sigurdsson in midfield, up against, I believe, Tom Davis and Morgan Schneidlin. Um, and yet yeah, another big step forward in his progress to uh, to get back into the team. Whether he'll be fit enough for Saturday, uh, Sunday sorry, to face Arsenal, we're not quite sure, but it is a big step in his um, re rehabilitation from that awful injury against Tottenham. Um, so we'll have to wait and see, but... He's come through it. Obviously, there's no ill feelings to be uh, ill. Ill feelings. There's certainly ill feelings to someone. Um, ill effects, um, and we'll have to see whether how fit he is. I'm sure he's still quite rusty, having um, what was it three or four months away. So we'll have to see how he is. Whether he'll be in the squad for the game on Sunday, or whether they'll give him a little bit longer. Obviously, big games against Manchester United, Chelsea, and obviously Liverpool and Derby coming up. So, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, some reports today speculation speculating that Gabamon won't play again this season. I don't think anything's changed in the view of Gabamon. He had another operation to get rid of the scar tissue. Um, and as far as I know, it's all on track for him to be back before the end of the season. I don't think it really matters whether he does come back before the end of the season, but it would be nice if he could get some games under his belt. Um, have a good break and then come back for pre-season and we'll have to wait and see so there you go that's been all today's news let me know your thoughts in the comments don't forget to give this video a like subscribe if you haven't already and if you want more great videos join us over on patreon the link is in the description see you later